Hello, dear friends. My name is Dr. Igor Atabekov. I'm a clinical oncologist practicing since 2010. Today, um, I'm going to talk to you about two uh, unofficially used drugs. Um, these are antiparasitic drugs that uh, have a very uh, wide range of uh, effectiveness against different helminths, uh, parasitic infections. Uh, but nowadays, because of their good preclinical data on um, different tumors, they started to get uh, more popular and widely used by oncological patients all over the world. And the good news, they are attracting the um, attention of uh, also of scientists. That's why they are also studied in some clinical trials. Of course, these are ivermectin and mebendazole. And we will talk about general information about these drugs, about their preclinical studies, about mechanisms of action against cancers, and we will talk about dosages, um, inofficial protocol, about clinical trials, and about uh, adverse reactions and contraindications. Um, also, I will tell you several uh, case reports on uh, separate patients who were taking it. So, let's get started. If you see this article, it's on albendazole and mebendazole. These are very uh, highly used uh, antiparasitic uh, drugs that can actually treat not only uh, intestinal parasites, but also that are spread in the body, in the skin, even in the brain. That means they are very bioavailable, they can reach and they can even go through the blood-brain barrier that protects our brain from all the other blood of the body, extra protection of our central nervous system. Even there they can go and can be treated potentially for different uh, brain uh, problems, including brain, par brain parasites. And that's why, of course, they are often used in different brain tumors. There are two case reports on mebendazole and two case reports on albendazole that show that they can be very promising and uh, they have a good effectiveness uh, in, on uh, cancer cells and on animals with tumors uh, in different types of cancer like liver, ovary, prostate, uh, guts, uh, breast, hand and neck and melanoma cancers. Also they have potential effect in uh, for example leukemia but because albendazole is uh, more toxic for bone marrow may often cause the, um, this um, loss of uh, white blood cell production. That's why mebendazole is uh, more highly investigated and used. Because in this case, we need to, uh, cancer patients need to take it longer. That's why when the use is prolonged, it may cause more uh, side effects. By the way, not far ago, I uh, did uh, the lecture on fenbendazole. It's a veterinary antiparasitic drug that uh, has some interesting uh, case reports, some interesting data, and also is mm, highly popular among uh, patients because of Joe Tippen's uh, case and uh, his protocol. If you want to know more, please watch this video. I show there some real patient cases. And let's talk a little bit about general information. So, mebendazole is used in many uh, parasitic infections, but also because it can block microtubule formation and it can um, decrease the uptake of glucose into the parasites. Microtubule disruption may actually also affect tumor cells because they cannot divide and they will undergo apoptosis or self-killing. Also, um, mebendazole can block the blood vessel formation and this decrease of intake of glucose um, is very important. We talked about mitochondrial metabolic theory of cancer, that uh, one of the main fuels for tumor is glucose. That's why um, the approach to block glucose, uh, decreasing it in diet, like keto diet, or using some drugs to decrease its uptake. For example, mebendazole, we see here, it decreases uptake of glucose, um, mean it can support this metabolic approach, uh, trying to starve the tumor, potentially. Also, Mebendazole can actually affect cancer stem cells 
because cancer stem cells are the most resistant to you know, all chemo drugs, to radiation therapy, and uh, many data tells us that cancer stem cells are the reason for all recurrences and uh, all resistance to treatment. For example, uh, this article says that animals with breast cancer, triple negative, that is very aggressive, and they had a metastasis in the brain, and when they gave them mebendazole in food, meaning it's very bioavailable, even when take, taken by mouth, it can decrease the spread of tumor in the brain and improve the survival of these mice. Other articles here was talked about glucose uptake, and it's a stomach cancer, and it says that it really decreases the uptake of glucose. And here the ovarian cancer, it works through P53 uh, system. So, mebendazole is widely used antiparasitic drug that is repurposed to cancer because of its good preclinical effectiveness against many types of cancer. It is highly bioavailable, it can go into brain, and uh, also it can, um, it's quite safe, uh, rarely patients experience any serious adverse reactions. And the second drug we're going to talk about, it's just a general information for now, and preclinical information. We're talking about ivermectin. It's also an antiparasitic drug. Two scientists got Nobel Prize for it, because it was very effective against a, a serious problem such as river blindness. And it saved a lot of people from uh, this problem, from this uh, parasitic disease. And here you can see 2024, a fresh article, that uh, ivermectin has other potential benefits, not only antiparasitic. We know there are there is a lot of information now about our favorite uh, viral infection of 2019, but still it's not in the protocols, because uh, they say the data is still lacking to include it in protocols. And also, of course, uh, it has a lot of anti-cancerous actions. We know that ivermectin can uh, block the glutamate gated chloride channels um, causing paralysis of parasites also can work on GABA receptors making this paralysis even worse and it can affect microtubules decreasing the um, growth and uh, division of cancer cells it can cause WNT beta catenin pathway that is important for division of cancer cells it can activate T cells immunity against cancer it is a P-glycoprotein inhibitor. P-glycoprotein is like a cannon that shoots something that is that the cell doesn't like outside the cell, protecting the cell. And um, many cancer cells, they make a lot of these cannons to shoot out all the chemotherapy we give to the patient, uh, so they will gain the resistance. Uh, ivermectin can block these cannons, meaning that uh, cancer cells cannot get rid of can uh, chemotherapy, potentially meaning that ivermectin can improve the uh, effectiveness of chemo drugs to overcome the resistance. For example, here we see the study 2024 that it can uh, suppress many various uh, uh, cancer cell lines, including uh, brain uh, tumors. And uh, really, it's effective against, for example, glioblastoma, breast cancer, colorectal, uh, prostate, lung cancers. But it's all preclinical, meaning it's not on humans. In general, both of these drugs, mebendazole and uh, ivermectin, they are quite safe. Their adverse reactions are generally not uh, dangerous. But even we have a lot of uh, preclinical data nowadays, they are not officially used in uh, cancer treatment. But there are some unofficial protocols and there are clinical trials and there are some case reports on real patients. Uh, we will talk about it in the next video. Also we will talk about dosages and adverse reactions. I want to thank everyone who support this channel and if you want to join them you can also become our sponsor or just buy me a coffee. I would appreciate if you share this video with somebody who may need it and uh, write any comment. It may help to make this video a little bit more popular. Anyway, I wish you good luck, God bless you, and goodbye. See you in the next video on mebendazole and ivermectin. You will hear a lot of important information there. Goodbye. Don't be a